According to a global survey in 2021, about one in three adults experience feelings of loneliness worldwide. This rate was slightly higher among Americans, including 61% of young adults and 51% of mothers with young children who reported feeling serious loneliness. Loneliness can have various serious consequences, including early mortality and a wide array of serious physical and emotional problems such as depression, anxiety, heart disease, substance abuse, and domestic abuse. There are external factors that can contribute to loneliness, such as physical isolation, moving to a new location or school, the loss of a loved one. But what if I told you that you didn't need anyone to be happy, that you could be happy alone? See, the thing is, I started thinking, trying to think about the times that I felt the loneliest. And the funny thing was that the times that I felt the loneliest was in the times where I was actually physically alone. It was actually when I was surrounded by people. It was when I lived in New York City and in a city of 8 million people, you would think that you know, you would be far from lonely, but in fact, I felt very lonely. I felt like just a number. And living now, where I am now in Washington, D.C., um, I have met amazing friends and people in my life. And But yeah, there were times where I felt lonely in spite of this. And I realized that it was because a lack of connection and I realized that the real reason also that I felt lonely though some of those times was because there was something missing in me and so the uh, the times where I felt the least lonely ironically especially during this pandemic was when I was by myself for long periods of time. So yeah, I wanna share with you guys some of the reasons why in the times where I would have, one would think that I should have felt the loneliest, I didn't feel lonely. And the times that I did feel lonely, I, I wanna share what I did about those things. So stay tuned. So during the pandemic, I spent a lot of time by myself and also because of work, the work that I do is where it requires a lot of writing and research. There are times when I, I go like a couple months without being able to hang out with my friends or see people have a lot of time to myself. and. I find that even in those times, I don't really experience a lot of loneliness. And I boiled it down to a few things. And the first one is that, and it goes back to a video that I made about how to be happy no matter what. Um, in that video, I talk about appreciating the small things and, and mindfulness and being mindful. and. I just know that in those times when I am alone, I take that time to really um, do small things that I enjoy. So whether it's going for a bike ride or listening to an audio book or, you know, make cooking something delicious. Like I find small ways to make myself happy and to treat myself. And because when you're alone, you really have the freedom to do whatever you want without judgment, with, you know, not being on anyone's timetable and just doing whatever you want to do when you want to do it. So it's actually quite a, a liberating feeling when you allow yourself to just um, enjoy your company and, and 
dedicate that time by yourself. Now, similar to those lines, another thing that you know has kept me not feeling lonely is to learn a new hobby. You know, and this could be a solo hobby. So for me, it was like skateboarding uh, and also video making and uh, learning new recipes or like in experimenting in the kitchen. But it could also be a social one too. I, I think it's a nice balance to have both. And I took up recently like tango dancing, tango lessons, because that was something that I had always wanted to do. I love to dance and tango was always something that I just hadn't tried yet. So that's something I did and through dance, even though, for instance, I wasn't, you know, necessarily making like friends that I, that became like my best friends or we were hanging out at the time. It was just nice to have that social interaction. And yeah, it was nice to have something to look forward to. I think regardless if it's a solo hobby or a group, activity that you do the fact that you're learning something new is just releases again that like dopamine in your brain and it just makes you happy and more like confident in your abilities as well and yeah so that kind of also blends into my next point which is to find ways to you know improve yourself you know a lot of times people don't um appreciate the alone time because they feel that you know they don't really enjoy sitting with themselves and their feelings and their thoughts and you know i think it's important to actually face your feelings and your thoughts and i think that being alone gives you that beautiful time to really reflect on who you are where you want to be and and not even just like in a very deep philosophical like existential you know crisis or questions that you have to ask but being alone also opens your mind to creative solutions and creative ideas um i know that many times like i wouldn't have achieved a lot of the things that i have achieved and i wouldn't have even you know thought of the plan had I not spent some time alone reflecting. And sometimes it's not like you have to sit down and be like, okay, I'm going to sit down right now and think about this, my future, or I'm going to map out the plan for this like genius you know, idea. It's not always like that. Sometimes just literally being alone in your own thoughts or consuming things that are like, you know, don't require a lot of your focus um, or intense like are intensely demanding it allows you to kind of just be in a relaxed state where ideas can flow from you and you can find inspiration from things as opposed to feeling like you have to perform so I definitely um, think that that's something that's helped me to you know just get my creative ideas going but if you can find the time to you know reflect on something that you want to improve about yourself and, and improve upon it and it could be something as so simple as like you know um you know taking care of your like or have creating a morning routine right um or you know trying to be a little bit more consistent with the gym or you know getting more steps in in your day it could be whatever small thing that you want to do to improve yourself you can take that time to do it and you know it's just all going to make you feel better about yourself and know yourself more and and value yourself and and at the end of it, you'll just be like become a better person and someone that you're you're more proud of and whose company you enjoy. So the next thing I want to say is that um, I had touched on this in my travel alone video, and I think when you are travel alone, like if you actually are able to do it, you you know you will be forced to have to 
you know go to places by yourself right like because you don't have that company and you know I remember when I was traveling I've traveled by myself several times before and it, I've always had an amazing experience and I've always met amazing people and I've always been so brave and so comfortable being on my own but then I'd come back to my home wherever I was and I wouldn't be as brave like I wouldn't take those chances I wouldn't have those uh, you know one-off experiences with strangers I wouldn't try to go to a bar by myself and everything and it wasn't until like a few months ago over the summertime I was just like I had gone to Greece and Spain and I had just an amazing time and part of it was with friends or a friend and then the other part of it was solo and each time I had an amazing time but when I came back I kind of felt like I wanted to revive that sense of adventure and wonder and curiosity and and yeah courage so I started going by myself to to a bar I mean I have I've gone to maybe like grab a quick bite somewhere at a cafe before by myself but I really wanted to just like go out and treat myself to happy hour or for dinner or something by myself and yeah it was such a great experience because I just had realized that I had such a great time enjoying my own company getting dressed up and my I guess this leads me to my final point is that you know we're never really alone because when I was doing these activities there was always someone who was talking to me it was whether it was a bartender or if it was like a, a guest next to me and so you know even though you may not have company you know or, or close friends near you that doesn't mean that you you are really alone every interaction is every human interaction or interaction with another living being whether it's a plant a furry friend or a human is valuable and that really does they've they've shown that connection does help us live longer happier lives so but it doesn't have to necessarily be all the time you know access to deep uh friendships and connections although that's absolutely important but you know in your day-to-day -day, just putting yourself out there and making connections with people that you meet even if it's just a short exchange at the supermarket or at a restaurant or wherever it may be at a museum if you're by yourself those things just help add to your arsenal of happiness and being comfortable being alone another thing everyone is suffering from the same bouts of loneliness from one point or at one point or another and so you what you think that you might be experiencing in terms of feeling lonely that you're by yourself realize that not only are there people around you but those people might be feeling the same way as you so all it takes is to just like break the ice and you never know what can happen you might even make a new friend so yeah i know that's happened to me and from the locker room at my gym to you know a dance class to the bar or restaurant that i sit by myself i mean you name it. I even have friends in the supermarket <laughs> where I go. They know me already. They know I'm the girl who buys like the healthy food and I buy flowers like every week or at least I used to. So yeah, so you never know what you can, what connections you can make with others when you're alone. But most importantly, I think the key takeaway here is that the connection that you have with yourself. And I think that's such a beautiful feeling when you finally learn to like love yourself, love being by yourself and appreciate the person that you are and, and, and also take that time to cultivate who you are. And I think once you're able to do that, 
then not only will you be able to be on your own comfortably, but then you'll be even more comfortable when you're around others. So yeah, that's all I have for you guys today. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. And if you like this video, please remember to subscribe and like the video and hit the bell notification and I will see you guys soon. All right, bye.